live and in living color from Set Rep Studios here in mid central Tennessee. Uh, tonight, I am going to just do a, some random items that I've purchased related to hobbying and um, let you know my impressions of them and we can go from there. So to start it off, I thought I would talk about some quick catch-up items. Uh, the first thing being that um, next weekend, Dawn and I will be traveling to Indianapolis for Gen Con. Uh, this will be the first Gen Con we've attended since 2019. And um, this will be the first Gen Con we are traveling as independents. Uh, previously, all our work from broadcasting from Gen Con and other gaming conventions here in the United States and in, over in the UK have been with the wonderful crew over at uh, the Beast of War or on Tabletop as they're now known. But this year we're going uh, independently and um, we're looking to reconnect with a lot of the uh, people we knew in the industry and new friends and new contacts. Uh, so we'll bring you some updates here and there through um, the show. So, first thing to start with is I thought we would talk about um, a Kickstarter that I got for some paintbrushes. Um, I have the uh, Wolf Bristle Brushes and the Sable Kalinske Collection here. So we're going to take a look at those and I'm actually going to compare them to another set that I purchased off of the internet. So while we're doing that, I thought I'm going to pull up a page here. So bear with me a second as I go back into Kickstarter. I'm going to pull up the Kickstarter page to show you how much I paid for these um, sets of brushes here. Yeah, yeah, what? I don't know. Uh, oh, that's an old one. Let me uh, go back in here. I pulled up a very old Kickstarter campaign from uh, Skirmish Miniatures for Skirmish Outbreak um, back in the day. Yeah. Uh, from our friends over at Dish Dash. Uh, what are you doing here to me? Goodness. I'll share my screen with you since I can get plugged in. What the heck is that? Interesting. Da, 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 da. Kickstarter's being a little weird today, but let me, t so basically what you got was, and I'll read the, the, the back of it here and I'll even show you guys in the overhead. So wolf bristle brushes and here's the description here. So basically it says 10 wolf bristle brushes with a rosewood tone handle, rosewood tone. What does that mean? and feral brass ferals. Feral brass. House in a velvet pouch, size from triple zero to seven. This pack is perfect for any kind of gray miniature prey. Brought to you courtesy of Chronicle RPG. That's the wolf bristle ones. Yeah, what's going on with the page here? Uh, we'll exit the page. Let me just bring up Kickstarter on its own. All right. Uh, the second pack here, it's really near thing, is the Sable Kalinsky collection. This is truly why I got it. I didn't really understand the allure of wolf bristles, but I was looking for some Kalinskys, and I do like Kickstarters, and so I do back Kickstarters quite often. And bring this up here. View all projects. Okay, so in this one, you get eight sable brushes with an ebony tone handle and distinguished black ferrules housed in a velvet pouch, size from zero to seven. Let this sable enable you to get your minis on the table. So as soon as I can bring up the page here, um, I'll share it with you and we'll see if these are really worth the money. Hey, it's the first one that came up. So I backed this project um back oh it's been quite a while now uh, let's see uh it may when does this end it's like it's been like maybe two years if that um trying to find the date here when it started uh, but it does not say on my page typically it usually will tell you right when the, it did but anyways let me share my page here 
And I have uh, another item to show you. We got a few things to look at. All right. So if you guys ever wonder about some of these Kickstarters, well, they're worth it. Some are, some aren't. But this is the actual. Oh boy. Computer's acting up tonight. Um, there we go. So this is the Kickstarter. And as you can see by there, I pledged 200 Australian dollars, which is roughly, what is it, about 150-ish US dollars. Um, for the, and what I got in there was uh, the two paint brushes, uh, a wolf bristle brush set, a handmade dice set, with leather case plus some RPG stuff. Uh, the dice are on here somewhere there. And I got some soap. Um, but I really wanted for the brushes. So let's look at the brushes, shall we? All right. I'm going to stop sharing that. So I paid about $150 US. All right. And 6,312 backers backed this. And they, they collected $674,000 uh, Australian. Uh, good for them. Okay. So I'm gonna stop sharing that page, come back, and welcome to everybody who's joined us. So let's crack open the brushes here. I'm gonna get my computer keyboard out of the way. Actually, let's put it over here. I'm gonna go to overhead cam, cut to it. Nope, that's the white angle, sorry. All right, so there we are. Let me go out a little bit. Okay, there we go. All right, so it comes in this fancy dancy tube. When you open the tube up, you get a velvet pouch with their logo on it, okay? When you open the bag, Now, I'm not sure why they say they get eight sable brushes with ebony tone. I have more than eight brushes here, obviously. Much more. It looks like I got two sets. If you look at it, there are exactly two sets in here. So uh, somehow I ended up with two sets of brushes, which is all right. Um, as you can see, the zero is on the sable size is the smallest. And let's take a look at the tip here. And let me move these forward for you. And I'm going to bring up the wooden coaster so you can see this. Oh, that blends in a little too much. That's all right. So we're going to come back in and I'll show you this. Okay. So you can see, I wish I had a piece of white paper handy. Oh, I, uh, maybe you can see it here better. All right, that's the, the tip. Um, it's soft, pliable. And I'm gonna go back to the uh, main camera. And I'm looking at the tip. I'm looking for broken bristles and anything like that. And let me see if I can bring it back for you. There you go. Okay, so let's talk about this handle. They say it's ebony tone handle. To me, I don't know if it's plastic or some kind of wood. And it says it has black ferrules. Um, I really want to destroy one of these brushes, but I feel that's such a waste to see what this is really made of. Um, by the sound of it, this is some kind of wood. It's not plastic. You can hear the sound of it. And this, I don't know. It's hard to tell in the studio lights without a better light. Um, but here, let me get back in here, frame. But this almost looks like a molded piece to this wood. It may be wood. Again, without cracking it open, I couldn't tell you, but it doesn't seem like, let me use my phone as an additional light here, and uh, we will, whoops, 
Come on. Where are you, flashlight? There you are. So, I don't know if you can see it or not. Come on, we'll focus. Focus on there. There it goes. So, if you can see, I don't see where it's connected like a metal ferrule. That's interesting. All right. Um, so that's the zero brush. Let me put that one back in. So for some reason, I ended up with two sets. Surprise to me. I guess I, I never noticed it. I, I opened it when I first got it and kind of looked at them, and then I put them away because I had nothing to work on them with. Um, so let's go to a seven at the other end. And we'll look at that under close cam. So again, it comes with the plastic tube, a traditional plastic tube, like anybody else. <sighs> I can get it off. I don't want to damage the bristles. Okay. Here's the tip. You can see we have a straight hair. The tip is they're pretty stiff. It's almost like there's a glue or something. And, and not like I don't know if it's just from the manufacturing process, but a little stiff. But you can see, see some stray hairs there. I'll wet it and see if I can get that to lay down, which it looks like I did. But yeah. So again, this is a metal, um, correction, wood. This is wood. It, looks, it feels like wood. I don't have a knife. I really want to. Oh, I do have a knife. We're going to take a little dissection. We're going to do a science experiment here. I'm not going to destroy it, but I'm going to cut in the handle. We're going to see what we're dealing with. What the lengths I go for for you guys. Yep, wood. So it's almost, I don't know if it's pine, but it's a very soft wood, very lightweight wood, almost like balsa. It's that light. Um, so there's that. So as you can see, let's talk about this ferrule. Let's we'll see what the ferrule is. No, it's metal. It's brass or something. There's metal. See it? So there, it is somehow a, a crimped on to the end here. Um, but you have some kind of wood. So this is not ebony. It's an ebony tone. So it's basically black. Black painted handle. Um, so a black painted handle. Some kind of brass. I wouldn't think they'd use brass. But I mean, could be brass. Um, but something, some kind of metal underneath here. Um, black coated ferrule. Uh, again, I have some stray hairs. We'll see if they lay down. But um, I'll grab some paint shortly, and we'll we'll try and see how they lay down. So that is the Kalinskis. I don't have a testing facility. So I can't tell you if they truly are sable hair brushes, um, but yeah. So I got this set. Uh, let me go back to the page. I just want to see if you bought just a set, what it would cost you. Come on, catch up with us. Uh, brush set was $61 uh, Australian. Um, it was 136 US, all right. So these are the US prices, $61 US uh, it, for just the sables. Um, and yeah, I'm not sure why I got a double set, but thank you, I guess. Um, but yeah. So let me put those back in their bag and we'll move on to the wolf bristles. Actually, you know what? I'm going to leave out a number seven. Is this the one I damaged? No. Let me get the one I damaged handle. The brush, the brush itself is still good. Put those away. And we'll move on to... The other ones. 
All right, let me go back to page here. All right, the wolf bristles come in the same bag, but they have a wolf. I'm assuming the other one was a sable. Um, let's see what I got here. So in this one, I was supposed to get 10 br brushes. Let's see what I got. I definitely got more than 10. Sure feels like I got more than 10. But, um, hey, I got a, a Sklinski Sable in that one. Oop, this one. The protector came off. Okay, let's look what we got here. So I got, in this kit, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. I got nineteen brushes here, so I got a double set, and they, I got included in the set. I don't know if they ran out or what, but I got another of the sable brushes. Um, so let's look at a wolf bristle brush and see if we can tell the difference. So we will look at the number seven brush and compare it to the number seven brush of the other side. Again, it's the, t it's the wooden handle with a rosewood stain. Yeah, it's just a rosewood stain. And you can see, I'm not sure why they call this feral brass, ferals, but it is, I don't, I don't consider that brass, unless that's chrome plated, let's look. All right, it's, I can hold it up there for you. Oh, I see brass. See that? Uh, I don't think that's brass. That may just be the whatever metal this is. Uh, it's hard to tell under this light. It has a brass tone to it, so it's very possible. All right, so I can tell you it's definitely the wood. Um, wardrobe. Uh, thank you. I'm using the road mics. Um, here, I'll go to the here. See, right there, road mic. Um, okay, so this is wolf bristles. Stiff. Good point. See if I can bring it up for you. Now let's compare that to a sable number seven. trying to feel a texture difference this one is fuller the sable one this one is for number seven and let's see they're both sevens uh, this one is fuller the sable one is um sorry thank you camera i love these sony cameras so if you guys are ever looking for some video recording or blogging cameras the sony uh, blogging cameras are amazing their fo focus is instantaneous so if i take it out and you see it focus here bring the back and it'll focus right on the brushes. That's gonna make a liar out of me. I'm sure do it to me now. Anyway, there it goes. Uh, usually it's pretty fast. It's it's trying to hunt. Um, but yeah, the the bristle. I'll be honest with you. I don't see a tremendous difference in the color. They look hair wise. They look exactly the same. They feel pretty much the same. So. Are they truly sable and wolf bristles? I don't know. I can't tell you. Um, again, I'd have to do DNA evidence or they'd have to show me photographic evidence. So the question is, is this set worth 40 bucks, $38? And is this set worth $60? Um, there is another YouTube channel I was watching. Uh, I wish I could remember her name. She does a lot of painting videos. Um, she did a whole bunch of different paintbrush reviews and she did test these and she wasn't a fan let's say she she did not rank them high now that's everybody's opinion everybody uses brushes different uh we've used gaming gears brushes for years i do like them um i've had a lot of people not fans of them which is okay everybody has their preferences yeah see that one just 
doesn't seem to want to hold. I don't know. We're going to pull some paint out here in a minute and put some paint on an item and see just out of curiosity. All right. So that is those brushes. So I'm going to leave out two of the number sevens, one from each set. And then I'm going to put the other ones back in their bag. Oh, come on. A couple lost their plastic covers. Let's put these away. And then, hey, Chris, how you doing? Walkabout Games is in the house. Chris, just reviewing some Kickstarter paintbrushes. These are the... Uh, Sable Kalinsky Kickstarter from, who are these guys? Chronicle RPG. And their Wolf Bristle Brushes, too. Um, you know, I was reading the back, and they make them sound really awesome. I haven't used them yet. We're going to try it a little bit here in a second. Um, this will not be a truly scientific test, but we'll give them a shot. Um, but I did get double of, of the sets, so I can't complain value-wise. You know, because I did get twice as many as I was supposed to get. Uh, I don't know if that was an oops or they did it on purpose because it took a little longer to get the sets than anticipated, uh, you know, Kickstarter. Um, but, you know, they advertised uh, ebony colored handles or what do they call it? Um, ebony tone. It's black paint. The handles are like a very soft wood, like a pine or a, I don't want to say balls. It's, it's probably pine. Um and the black ferrules. It's black painted metallic ferrules. Um, but you were supposed to get eight sable brushes. I got double that. I got 16-ish. Um, and then the wolf bristle brushes um, was from 0, 000, 007, and that was So it's 10 brushes. And I got 20. So I, I can't complain as far as the amount of brushes I got. So then it comes down to do they perform and we're going to pull out some artist Kalinskis. they're not Winsor newtons but they are artist ones so bear with me a second while i find them because i have something i want to share with you uh here shortly another thing you might want to look at if you are on facebook and you do any kind of hobbying you might have seen this advertised and it is quite expensive i think for what it is but is it worth it so we're going to check that out in a minute but here we go. All right, let me switch to cameras. So, oh, hey. Let me zoom out. So here we go. These are advanced art brushes. I bought these off Amazon. Uh, these are sable watercolors. Uh, these are sable brushes. There's nine of them in this box. I uh, just got away. Got my maple golden brand dry brushes that come in a tube like that. Double brushes. That's good. Yep. All right. So... Here you go. Nicely presented. And uh, I'm not sure what sizes are in here because I, I have, as you can see, I've not even opened them. Uh, so I have a zero, a two, a four. Uh, they go all the way up. So let's pull them out here. I really hate to do break this box, this presentation here because uh, it's really nice. Um, but, you know, what are you going to do? All right, let's pull out this one back here come on now sizes an eight okay it looks like these are an even size so you got zero two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen they go all the way up to sixteens all right so let's look at these under the uh, the camera here let me zoom back in okay all right so that is there so you can see the ferrule goes all the way up to the barrel um it's a wood handle uh it is skinnier than the this wider handle so i'm trying to decide which one i like i mean i, I kind of like the the thicker barrel here for gripping you know for painting uh it does feel a little you know pretty natural um that's pretty it sits nice in your hand versus well, that's that's pretty okay but this one the artist brush definitely sits more against the hand in this aspect versus this one. Okay. Oh, that's a one. I pulled out the wrong one. That's all right. I got a wolf here. Um, so here it is. Uh, stiff because it hasn't been used yet.
but uh, yeah, this is the sable brushes that I got from Amazon. I don't remember how much these were. Uh, they weren't was in Windsor Newton prices. Uh, they weren't inexpensive, but they weren't expensive to put it bluntly. So uh, that's those. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pull out a little bit of paint here. And it's going to be an unfair test because I don't even have water in with me. Um, but we'll pull out some paint. And we're going to use some Vallejo. And here we go. So we're going to use Vallejo, Field Gray, German General. Yep, German Field Gray. Okay. So I have, it's not primed, so we're just going to go off of this. I wish I had something primed, but I don't have anything primed at the moment. So I don't know how a fair test this will be, but we'll give it a shot. Um, and I am going to use... Ah, heck it. I need those still, unfortunately. We'll use this. I don't need that. Okay. So let me shake this up. Okay. And we cut back. All right. So this is a number eight. And I'm just going to... If I had some water, I'd thin it down. As you all know, we should thin our paints down. Um, so what I'm looking for is how the paint adheres to the bristles. You know, does it absorb it, whatnot. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just lay a stripe down, one stripe, one wipe with this bristle. And we'll see how it goes like that. Okay. So you can see how it laid down. Does it lay down even? For the most part it does. I mean, it was a little heavy at the beginning, so we'll go and finish it off. It seems to do nice. The bristles seem to, however, I do notice the bristles here. I don't know if it's hard to say because of this. Um, they are kind of, you know, spreading out, but that's a huge brush. So, I mean, if you go off of that. So I'm gonna set that aside because I'm gonna have to wash that. I'm gonna pull the wolf bristle brush out. And I do the same thing. Just load up the tip of my brush. And you can see right there, I've got paint. And this is a seven. And we're gonna do the same thing. And you can see I have some stray hairs already. So the true test would be actually painting a full on miniature. Versus, so that eight brush, the uh, artist brush, uh, seems to hold paint a little better than this, but again, this is not thinned out, so I can't compare apples to apples on this. Um, what I'm looking for is do my, does the brush itself stay together? You know, I'm not putting that much pressure on it. Does it start breaking apart, spreading out versus this one? This one seems to hold better. It does seem to spread more evenly, as you can see. These, This is that wolf bristle. Again, I don't know what wolf hair has to do with painting. If anybody knows, I'd love to hear from you. Um, I will have to do some modeling. we got some painting I have to come up with. But I wanted to give you guys a quick overview of these brushes, you know, based upon what they claim in their uh, Kickstarter. Let me go back to the campaign here, and I'll share it back with you guys. Real quick, we'll share that. So they say, anything's possible with brushes, just ask. Uh, Kieran of Keys Minis, uh, or perhaps you, our minis, your minis feature in White Dwarf. Uh, so, I, you know, they claim people have painted their stuff. Um, oh, seven additional free sable brushes that reset, eight additional free wolf brushes. Well, I mean, so you got double the order, basically. Um, free mini STLs and a D and D, which yeah, okay. Um, we've created our Kaliski sable brushes based on the miniature painting communities and 
exhilarating response to our original wolf bristle brushes. I have never heard of these co- people. I, Chris, you know, you're you're pretty knowledgeable in the companies. Um, I don't know what your thought is, but let me put that one away. Let me cut back to that camera. So, yeah, I don't, I don't really know, to be honest with you. So I, I'll have to do some more testing on them. They're paintbrushes. I'm going to be honest with you. A tool is only as good as the person using it. I know people who paint extremely well, and they buy the ten dollar set bag of brushes from Hobby Lobby or you know some Michaels or some hobby store, um, and they use them until they're dead, and then they buy new ones. Um, the the best tool in your box is the one that you use and you use well. It doesn't matter what the cost of it is. Now, obviously, some of them you get what you pay for. You know, some of the Windsor Newtons, if you take care of them properly and you wash them and all that stuff, then, yeah, of course, they're going to last. My, it'll be interesting to see how these uh, two sets hold up on an actual miniature versus just testing them on stretchers that go in a Huey. Right. Um, I have... Several games I have to put together that will be on our other channel, The Other Realms, um, because they're non-historical. Uh, one will be the Lord of the Rings Battle of Pelennor Fields, and then I have Shatterpoint, which you could probably see kind of over here. And then uh, I got the new 40K set. Don't shoot me. I'm sorry. Um, but you got to get the low-hanging fruit when you're starting another channel. So 40K it is. Um, because they're coming out with Epic. I love micro scales, So... I, I, I need to get my feet. I don't know anything about uh, 40K. My brother plays it. I've never truly ever played the game. So, all right. Let's move on to a new item. Uh, let me get these out of the way. Real quick. Uh, Something that I saw advertised on Facebook that looked really cool. It was a storage solution for hobbies. Now, if you've ever seen Monument Hobbies on Facebook, they have been advertising this. So let me move. I got to make space. Uh, let me fold that in half so I don't make a mess. And let me zip this back up real quick so I don't dump stuff everywhere. And I'm going to go to the side cam. Forward. Bum, bum, bum. The monument. New epic terrain drop for preview. Dang it. I'll have to look. Um, this is the monument hobby bag. Um, so basically, it will store your paints. It'll store all, everything you need for hobbying, uh, for your miniature painting and whatnot. So on one side, it's angled. It's hard formed, as you can hear. And... Um, let me show you what's inside. So when you open it up, I'm going to have to back it up a little bit. It comes with paint rack. Um, and then you have storage down here for brushes and tools and whatnot. I mean, we have hobby tools down here. We've got Army Painter dry brushes. No, we're not sponsored by Army Painter, but it's what we can get around here. Uh, we have a game master brush, you know, glues, sprays. So everything you pretty much need can go in here. The cool thing is, um, and I'm gonna try and do this. Let me switch to uh, another camera here. Oops. Okay, nope, that one. Let's go to that one. And I need to widen out. Okay, it's only gonna let me go so wide because uh, that's a close I cam. But when you set it up, you can open this up. You have a cutting surface with a mat that fits in right here. And you have places to store your paint brushes. You have a place for your wet palette to be stored. You have a place for brush soap. You can have paints sitting upright. Uh, and then here is where water cups go. Um, so I'll pull those out, but I, I the neat the thing you need to understand what you get with the bag when you order the bag is you get the bag, you get the foam and this foam and this foam. You do not get the cutting board. You do not get the brush pack. Uh, 
you have to order that separately. You do not get the water cups. So you're getting a bare bones bag. So we, I did order the brush case. So we have some brushes in here. We've got some army painter sets. Um, I got game masters and those. So we'll probably put these up against those other brushes and see how it goes, but well organized. So you literally can take this to a convention like Adepticon and use it, you know, and these un Velcro here. So if you wanted to remove them, you could for, you know, if you're confined on space. Um, so that's this, the hobby side. And like I said, you can put all your paints in here and I can't remember how many paints it stores. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 48 paints. So 96, uh, 96 paints should be more than enough for whatever you're doing. Okay. So that's this side, paint storage work side. And this just goes in here, just like so. And it lays flat, it's pretty nice. And then your paints, they don't fall out, which is nice. And then you turn it to the other side, like this. And we'll move the handle over. And then you have storage space. So you get the, you can order these water cups. Um, so I ordered the water cups, you know, they clip on, they go in that space. It's just a cup. You can, you don't have to order them. You can use anything you want for a water receptacle, but I ordered two of them just to make the match. We've got glue back here. We've got painting handles, glue um, in here. We have more glue, wet palette paper, you know, whatever you need. So anything you need hobby wise can go in this bag. You can put rule books in here or whatever you wanted. So it's, it was not cheap. It's very well made. It's not cheaply made. Everything is high quality. Um, I'll see if I can find the webpage. Oops, I forgot a bottle of glue or paint here. Let me cut back to the main page real quick. And let me bring them up. So why am I showing you this? Just because if you're looking on the internet and you see something, you're like, oh, that looks kind of cool. So Monument Hobbies. So Monument Hobbies. Uh, you know, they do all kinds of green stuff and different things. Let's see. Uh, there it is. The Go Bag, EVO is what they call it. Now, last time I checked, they were out of stock. Um, but it looks like it's back in stock. So let me show oh, there you go. You can see the page. I guess, I guess I was still sharing the page. Um, but yeah, it's $195. And like I said, you do not get the, the cutting mat. You don't get the water brush um, containers. You get the bag and the foam inserts. So if you want the other stuff, you have to buy the other stuff. Um, yeah. So there you go. So that is a couple hobby items that I looked at. So let me give you my opinion. Is it worth $195 for a hobby bag? Yeah, it is. Uh, here's why. A bag is another tool and it's only as good as your intended use. So for this, I literally, we could take this to Adepticon, um, have a couple plastic containers on the one side with foam in it or some kind of setup where you could put a model you're working on, put it in that foam case, throw it in that side of the bag, and then take it to Adepticon, we'll say, and say you're between things or it's downtime. You could find yourself a quiet corner somewhere, put headphones on, listen to some music, open your bag up. You've got a work surface right there, and you pull out your mini and you can go to town. As long as you got an access to some water, uh, you know, so if you carry a couple bottles of water, which you should at any convention, uh, you're good to go, man. So uh, everything's good to go. It's easy combined. It's all uh, combined, easy to carry. Uh, it's very well balanced. It's extremely well made. I didn't find any loose threads, any cheap zippers. The uh, cordura nylon outside of the bag is very well done. Uh, so. I compare it to some of the gaming bags that you can get out there to store and carry your minis. Um, it's just another investment and, you know, so it's an excellent bag to get. So yes, I think it's worth the $195. Um, all of a sudden done when you add the cut and board, the mat, which is not 10 bucks, the, the, what they call the brush vault, which is a carry case, that's 22 bucks. So you're at 32 extra dollars 
And I bought the water cups, which I don't even see what they, can't remember what they were, but I don't see them. Um, it's probably under hobby tools. Uh, but, you know, so you're probably spending up there there. So they're 720, so for another 15, so extra 50 bucks. So for about $250, I decked out this bag and now a lot of some people are going, well, that's ridiculous. Why would you ever spend that much money on a bag, especially just to carry a hobby? Because we have a game room now that we is also our studio and, but we don't have like a designated hobby space like I had in our previous home. Um, I don't know if I really want it, you know, big full blown desk with paint racks. I like this because I can take it out do what I need to do, put it away, and it's out of the way, it's clean. So when the grandkids come over or whoever, it's not in the way. Um, so the bag's awesome. I give it a thumbs up. I highly recommend it. If you're looking for a good hobby bag, uh, I would suggest you explore that for yourself. Um, but I, I recommend it. Prank brushes. Um, so... You know what? I don't rem I wish I want to say this set of brushes from Amazon cost me maybe 30 bucks. Who knows if they're really good? I, I will let you know with a follow up um, posting, you know, how they do. But are these worth $68 or $68 and $38 or $61, whatever the case may be? Uh, so basically, 100 bucks for both sets. I got a lot of extra brushes because I joined the Kickstarter. So I got a double order. So I got a lot of brushes. Are they worth $100? I don't know yet. Um, here's my thought on them. They're not cheaply made. They're, you know, they're not, when you, to be fair, they say rosewood tone. They don't say rosewood handle. So fair to them. It's just rosewood stain on a pine type handle. It could be another wood, but I'm gonna go with pine. Um, with feral brass ferrules. I don't know what feral brass is, um, but yeah. If anybody out there knows what feral brass is, I would love to hear from you. Um, and then, you know, black. So basically you're supporting a small company when you, you're backing Kickstarter. If it's something that you're interested in, you want, the way I look at Kickstarter and buying products off Kickstarter, unless it's a very well-established company like Simon who uses Kickstarter for every game that they release, um, you know you're going to get a quality product from Simon. Simon has always delivered on their products, and you know there's there's schools of thought on how why Simon continues to use Kickstarter instead of just producing a game and selling it. It's a business model where they're less risk, truly, you know. You're not putting out a whole bunch of cash up lay out front and, you know, less risk of it not turning around. You're supporting a small company. So even if these brushes are not 100% awesome, they're still brushes. You, you spend a little bit of money. It's Kickstarter's a gamble. So if you're one of those people that like to go to Vegas or play the lottery or scratch offs or whatever the case may be, or even if you play a video game where you have to pay to open a treasure chest or whatnot, same difference. You spend a little money, you get a product, you use it to the best of its ability, and unless it totally just was crap and fell apart and the bristles just fell out when you first use it, no big deal. So guys, I know this wasn't the most exciting one, but truly I spent my money so you didn't have to spend yours unless you wanted to. Um, so I can't give you 100% value on these you know, until I actually use them. Um, I will. We'll do it on a hot, one of our hobby streams um, when I get to a point where I can paint some stuff. Um, so we'll get some real world experience on them. But from initial impressions, they're fine. They look very similar to this set of Kalinsky brushes. They're not made for miniatures. These are for artists, uh, watercolors. But, you know, we use acrylics, water-based acrylics. So, um, yeah. Guys, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I thank you for joining me on tonight's broadcast i hope this gives you a little bit of enlightenment into some products that i look at and order it to see if it's worth what they say it is we'll reserve final judgment if these brushes are worth 100 dollars total again i got double the, the the brushes so i got double the fun for double you know for the same price so we will see uh thank you very much for joining me tonight on the sitra podcast for a review show uh, if you have any questions, any comments, suggestions, 
you know, uh, as we go on with products, we're always looking for suggestions for ideas for future shows, whether it's a Wednesday night hobby show or a Sunday programming. Um, Jim's got some more stuff coming up here in the next few weeks. He's got some more of the Kursk battle, I believe, and some finalized the Sicily battle. And um, he's got Mogadishu coming up here on the anniversary coming up. And, and wow, I can't believe it's going to be, what, 30 years? Yeah, 30 years. Um, so stay tuned for that. So we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to get the feedback. Please like, share, and subscribe. As always, this is Bill for the SitRub Podcast, and I will see you the next time. Take care.